Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna be making a 16 ounce glass snow globe. So right here, you're gonna see me filling up the globe with my desired glitter. And I find it easier for me to get a medicine cup and squeeze the tip of it and just make sure all the glitter goes in. And if I have any fallout, I'll go ahead and pick it up once I'm done. What I like about these globes, um, glass globes, is that they're quick to make and they're really fun to make. Um, the holes already come pre-drilled so I don't have to worry about that. Um, the only downside I would say to these is for me, I have a little bit of trouble closing them up and in the later on in the video you will see why. So I actually have this set to fast mode just because it does take quite a bit of time to fill it up. But once I get done filling it up with the glitter I want, I go ahead and start working on my mixture and that is equal parts of distilled water and glycerin. And I go ahead and mix it until you see no bubbles and, I mean not bubbles, um, no swirls. And you want to go ahead and let the bubbles rise just because it does get a little bit of bubbly. And once you start filling it up, you want to go ahead and shake it aggressively. I know it sounds crazy, but yes, that way the glitter does not get stuck and it pushes like the glitter up, if that makes any sense. Um, it, it will tend to get a lot of air bubbles if you don't let it sit for at least a couple of hours or overnight. So once you are done filling that up with glycerin, you want to go ahead and let the cup sit just for a couple of hours or overnight so it can degas. And then if you need to add any more liquid, go ahead and do that. So now for this step, we're going to go ahead and start plugging up the hole. I use a furniture bumper and then I go ahead and put a piece of double sided tape just to make sure it has a little bit of extra protection. And then I go ahead with my UV resin and for this part, you want to be very careful and not to put too much because if you do, the cup will be wobbly and wonky at the bottom and then you would have to probably take that off. So you want to make sure you cure that under a UV light for three to four minutes. If you don't have a UV light, you could also go ahead and just leave the cup out in the sun and it will work just as well. And I actually did the opposite of what I said not to do. I actually added way too much resin and I had to sand some of it down as you can tell in the next clip. But I, I sanded it down and I just made sure not to add too much once I added my logo and my instructions to it. And it was perfectly fine. Um, these are a little bit harder for me to close up sometimes just because I do like to add my logo and my instructions at the bottom. Um, but yeah, you just want to be very, very careful when you are closing it up if, if you're using UV resin. So this is actually my second time using a UV DTF wrap and these are, I will say, a bit intimidating for me when I first got them because I know that once you lay these down, there is no lifting without it ripping or cracking and I actually did that with the first one that I tried out. So patience is key when you're using a UV DTF wrap and again you just want to be very careful and go very slow. Um, but other than that, these are honestly such a game changer. I, as much as I love vinyl, I will still work with vinyl because I love weeding. It just It's therapy for me. But these are fun to make and these are quick and cute. So before you apply these wraps, I forgot to mention not to use alcohol. Do not clean the cup with alcohol because it will make the transfer tape stick to the cup and it will damage both the cup and the design. And the way I like to apply these, I go ahead and squeegee the design before I remove half of the backing. You want to make sure you do not remove the entire backing just so you have more control of how you're applying it. And I go ahead and cut off the backing or well, half of the backing and then I start from the middle and work my way out. That way it's easier to apply and you don't get any lifting or cracking in the design. I also forgot to mention that when you're applying the wrap, you want to go ahead and squeegee it really, really well just to avoid any air bubbles because like I said, once you apply the design, there is no way to lift it or remove it once it's on there. So yeah, just go ahead and make sure you squeegee out any air bubbles. So for the lid, 
before you paint it um, make sure you sand it just a light sand i used a i think a 20 grit sanding block and it works perfectly fine and once you do that go ahead and wipe it clean just with a tiny bit of alcohol just to get any debris um off of it and i like to use a white um chalk paint before i apply any color just so it can be brighter and a little bit more opaque So we're just going to go ahead and speed through this process. I like to do two layers of the white chalk paint and then two layers of the color because we are going to be adding rhinestones and I like to give it the extra coverage just in case there's any little gaps. Um, you won't really be able to tell once you add the rhinestones. So in between each layer, just make sure you let them dry. Once you get to the side of the lid, you want to be very, very careful and not to get it on the inner part of the lid. This is why I like to use this. It's actually a PVC pipe, I believe. I think it's a two inch. I'm not too sure. I would have to double check, but I like to use it because I have better control of the lid and it makes it easier when you are applying paint or rhinestones. So again, we're just going to speed through this next step, but all I'm doing here is adding a thin layer of Mod Podge just to seal in the acrylic paint and get ready for the next step. The Mod Podge dries pretty quickly, so once that's fully dry, we are going to be applying rhinestones. So for the rhinestones, we're going to be using two different sizes. We're going to use 5mm and 2mm. We're gonna start off with 2mm where the straw hole is and then we're gonna work our way with the 5mm. I will say this, I was not happy with the way this lid turned out. Um, just because I shouldn't have used the 2mm at all, I should have just stuck with the 5mm. But um, practice does make perfect. It's sometimes a little bit hard to do these lids just because you do get huge gaps because the hole for the straw is not really in the middle. So there's only so much room you have to work with on one side of the lid. But once you get that down, everything else will just come into place. So for the glue, I am using Liquid Fusion and I absolutely love this glue. Um, it works really well. So once you are done applying the rhinestones, you want to let the rhinestones with the glue sit for 72 hours just to make sure it's very well cured. And once those 72 hours are up, go ahead and take the lid to the sink and give it a good scrub. Do not soak the lid just because it is a bamboo lid. So you want to make sure you get all the oils and residue from the glue your hands and the wax pen off the rhinestones just to bring back that shine and once you're done go ahead and pat it dry so that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video go ahead and give us a thumbs up and make sure the notification bell is turned on just so you're notified whenever we do upload a new video thank you guys